Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for telling a friend she's just projecting, and my husband isn't cheating. For context, I'm 31F, and I've been with my husband, J34M, for 10 years. We met through mutual friends, started dating shortly after, and got engaged about two years into our relationship. We're not legally married yet because we both agreed we wanted a big wedding and a nice honeymoon, but that stuff is expensive. We decided to prioritize spending our money on things like our house, vehicles and medical needs instead. We did buy matching rings that we wear as if we're married, and we refer to each other as husband and wife so socially, we present as a married couple, we just haven't had an actual wedding. Our families understand this, and since both of us come from divorced parents, they're okay with us not rushing into marriage. Most of our friends don't comment on it either, they either don't care, agree that there are more important things to spend money on, or just don't see legal marriage as necessary anymore. Then there's Trisha, 28F. I met Trisha through an old job, and we got along really well. We enjoy the same music food and have similar opinions on movies, books and clothes. Trisha is a lovely person, and I genuinely enjoy her friendship, but she occasionally goes through these weird phases where she starts analyzing the behavior of the men in our social circle. She'll present her theories to us based on things like social media posts, odd behaviors she says she noticed during group events like barbecues or beach trips. Now I have no problem calling out potential shady behavior in a friend, but the things she considers suspicious really don't hold much weight in my opinion. For example she's never let go of the idea that one of our male friends might be gay. Her evidence is that he's a bit of a perpetual bachelor. According to him, he's just holding out for a girl who's okay with his transient lifestyle, since he has to travel a lot for work, and would want her to join him, rather than wait at home. But according to Trisha, he must be having gay flings across the country, and refuses to tell us, even though many of our friends are gay, out of the closet, and even bring their partners to social events. Then there's my sweet Jay. Jay has never been a very physically affectionate person, and he might be autistic, though he's not interested in getting a formal diagnosis. He took the RADSR test, a screening tool for autism in adults, about four years ago, while seeking treatment for chronic migraines, and the results suggested that he may be autistic. Once he got those results back, he felt like that was good enough and gave him some closure, so he didn't pursue it further. I didn't push the issue because I didn't see the need to pressure him about a diagnosis he didn't feel he needed. On top of that, Jay loves fishing. When you put these two facts together, you get a picture of someone who's passionate about his hobby. He knows all about the different types of aquatic environments in our area, when the different spawning seasons are, what every species eats, how they hunt, and he can even tell what kind of fish is on his hook based on how it feels when he's reeling it in. He can look at a body of water and instantly tell you if fishing will be good that day, and he's never wrong, it's like living with a fish-based psychic. Since I love seafood, his fishing obsession has only been a plus for me. If I mention wanting a fish dinner on Monday morning, he'll bring home and cook up enough fish for us to eat like royalty that night. He's even excited to catch fish to make into fertilizer for my new rose bushes because he's confident he'll pull up the perfect food for them. The suspicious activity, according to Trisha, is that Jay often goes on spur-of-the-moment fishing trips by himself and can be gone for hours. He'll suddenly stand up, say something like, all right, fish in time, give me a kiss, and head out. While I can see how something like that might look suspicious, I know for a fact that Jay isn't cheating. He always sends me countless pictures and videos while he's out, and he'll call me on the phone when he's particularly excited about a good catch, how he's trying to catch a sneaky fish, or when he sees a cool bird. Even if he's gone for 10 hours, my phone will be blowing up the whole time with pictures of his sunshine smile next to a fish or videos of him cheering, as he shows me what he's got on the stringer, a long, thin rope used to keep fish alive in the water. I love these pictures, videos and phone calls because they fill my heart with joy knowing how happy and at peace he is on the water. I join him more often but I usually stay home since it wouldn't be fair to our dogs if we both left for hours on a whim. Instead, I find my peace in seeing things through his eyes, and when he comes home, I'm always eager to hear all about the trip while he prepares the fish for us to eat. We even have a game where he quizzes me on what types of fish he caught, and if I win I get a big hug. But none of this is good enough for Trisha. For years now she's had her suspicions about Jay, but I've always brushed them off because I trust him completely. When Trisha first brought up her theory, I told Jay about it. He was genuinely hurt and asked if I shared her suspicions and wanted him to go fishing less. I told him no, but I felt he deserved to know what Trisha was saying about him. He understood and was willing to let it go. Over the years, as Jay and I continued our happy, unmarried life filled with fishing, 
Trisha became more adamant that Jay was cheating, and that the reason we weren't married was that he convinced me to wait for an expensive wedding so he could continue his affairs during fake fishing trips. Her proof was his random trips, the fact that he doesn't physically touch me, a lot in public, and how he never lets me go with him. I've shown her countless times the huge folder of fishing pictures and videos on my phone, call logs showing how often we talk while he's out, and explained that I don't need him to be all over me in public to feel secure in our relationship. I've also mentioned that we have a responsibility to our dogs not to leave them alone for hours on a whim. I've even told her she's welcome to ask Jay if she can tag along on a fishing trip to see for herself how committed he is to fishing, but she always refuses. Since Jay was fine with ignoring the drama, I let it slide, up until about a week ago. Jay was planning a day-long fishing trip with two of our friends, Vince and Maria, who are married. They saw the trip as a blend of a staycation and a chartered boat trip. Trisha privately told me I must be happy that Maria is going because she'll ensure that Jay can't cheat on me, and Vince can't cover for him if he tries. That was the last straw for me. Now she was dragging poor Vince into this and slandering his character when all he did was agree to a day trip with an old friend. I told Trisha she either needs to bring her suspicions directly to Jay and hash it out with him or let it go because, as far as I'm concerned, she's just projecting her issues onto Jay since she can't keep a guy longer than three months. While that might not be entirely true, I wanted to hurt her feelings and put her in her place because she's dragging my sweet Jay through the mud. Trisha took it personally, and said I was just naive and afraid to be single. I fired back that she was projecting again since she's a serial dater who scares men off with her wannabe Sherlock Holmes nonsense, and she can't fathom a man with a real hottie because she only goes after fake gym bros who are more interested in their own bodies than hers and wannabe finance bros who blow their paychecks on crypto. She stopped talking to me after that, and I haven't reached out to her either because I'm still mad. Our friends don't really take this situation seriously, saying things like, that's just how she is, or, what did you expect, or, we know Jay isn't cheating, but maybe Trisha just doesn't see that. At first I was determined to stand my ground, but now I'm wondering if maybe I was too harsh and should apologize for being petty, just because I wanted to shut her down and get her to stop with her theories. TLDR my friend is convinced my husband is cheating on me, because he loves fishing, and goes on day trips often. After years of hearing her doubts and showing her proof that he's faithful, I snapped at her, insulted her taste in men, and criticized her dating history. Am I the asshole for what I said, and should I apologize, or should I stick to my guns, and let her deal with it? Update I wanted to give a small update before I drop the hammer tonight. This will be shorter because Jay and I are going fishing this afternoon after lunch. I showed Jay the original thread and we had a heart-to-heart -heart that lasted into the early hours of the morning. First off, he wanted me to express his appreciation to all of you, as well as shout-out to his fellow fishing enthusiasts. He encourages everyone to get out there and enjoy fishing, regardless of how successful you are, and to share in the joy it brings, even if we can't all fish together. After going through all of your kind words and support, we shared our thoughts on the matter, not just as a couple, but as two people with different levels of attachment to the individuals in our friend group, we both agree that we've been holding onto these friendships more out of a sense of nostalgia and a desire to be kind, rather than really examining what these friends bring to the table and whether they enrich our lives. We've been distracted by a desire for community and old bonds, sacrificing our comfort and respect for ourselves and our relationship. While Jay and I have different views on what certain friends mean to us, we agree that enough is enough and it's time to establish boundaries and not give an inch to those who have caused us to come to this point, especially Trisha. That said, Jay is a good man, a strong, smart, generous man, and reading the feedback from all of you made me realize something. I am fucking angry. I allowed a toxic person to slander my sweet Jay. My Jay. She belittled him, devalued what we have, and I allowed it like some kind of coward. That's going to end now, and I'm ending it my way. I'm not going to take the high road or handle this with tact and decorum. I'm going to blow up her social life and take down anyone who sides with her. Scorched earth, no prisoners. During the fishing trip yesterday, I blocked Trisha on everything and reached out to people to let them know that Jay and I would be distancing ourselves from her, why we were doing it, and shared any theories Trisha had about them, along with screenshots or evidence I had. I also asked a few friends if they thought Trisha might be interested in Jay, as some people suggested that might be her motivation for trying to get between us. Here's what's been uncovered so far. Matt, the friend Trisha claimed was gay confirmed again that he isn't gay. He shared a story about how he, his roommate, and Trisha hung out once, and Trisha got handsy and tried to hook up with his roommate who declined. The next morning, Trisha brushed it off, saying men like that sort of thing. 
After that, Matt and his roommate were uncomfortable with her and stopped inviting her over. Matt thinks this might be where the gay rumor started, and he's decided to step away from the group to reevaluate some things. Vince and Maria have gone silent. Maria believed Trisha was the victim in all of this, and Vince seemed to be taking a hands-off approach, but they stopped responding after another friend sent them a screenshot of Trisha suggesting they might be swingers because they have a decorative pineapple on their kitchen counter. No one has been able to get a response from them since. Another friend got into a fight with his girlfriend after she went through his phone, because of the drama, and found either texts or pictures that she claims prove he's been sleeping with Trisha on and off. I heard this from his brother, who reached out after the girlfriend left a voicemail saying she's kicking him out, and the brother wanted to know what was going on. That friend has also gone silent, and none of us know the girlfriend well enough to reach out to her directly. One friend admitted she's been struggling with prescription pain meds after her mom passed away from cancer. Trisha had been trying to blackmail her into getting dirt on Matt J. and Vince by using the drug abuse as leverage. When this came to light, I focused on supporting this friend rather than my beef with Trisha. We're now working on creating a support system for her moving forward, and that's become the group's main focus. An old friend of Jay's dropped a bombshell, revealing that Trisha tried to hook up with him in the bathroom during a Friendsgiving dinner we had last year. When he turned her down, she tried to hook up with another guy in the bathroom afterward. Jay, some other friends, and I created a new Discord server for everyone who's distancing themselves from Trisha, and so far, it's been a lot of comparing dates, texts, and DMs, but it looks like Trisha has been trying to either hook up with or break up every guy in the friend group and get leverage on every girl. But at this point, we've got bigger fish to fry. It's time to put this behind us and focus on helping the friend who really needs it. Thank you all for your kind words and advice, even the tough ones. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day.